Yes, on this I got one answer from you. That is, yeah, that is correct. You have answer for the third circle. This is second. This is third circle. <clears throat> I answered the third question. I was like, third was first, second was second, yeah, and the first one was third. It's okay. We just need the answers, right? Okay, Vaika. So Which I animals? The first one. Yeah, anyone, anyone. So Out of the three, one. anyone. Okay. Yeah, for the second one, that is correct. So, this you have sent for the second one. Okay. Why have you sent any answers till now or not? Yes, or... sir. I sent it for two. I guess you have sent it on the wrong idea, I guess. Okay, anyways, you can just tell me the answers. I have received the answers of Sundas. Okay. Sundas, think of one more name. And Vaiga, what were the what were your answers? Please tell me. Like yak, sheep. Yak, sheep. Yeah. Camel. Camel. Good. Okay, Sundus. So you were about to send the answer of the third one that is yak. So these are the three animals okay. yak, sheep, camel. All right. That was an interesting exercise. Okay, so now let's move ahead. And today we will be covering about the uh, we will be talking about how silk is obtained, basically. Right. All right, guys. So in order to uh, obtain silk, what is basically done? Mulberry trees are cultivated. They are basically grown on a large scale. Why is it so? Because silk worms basically feed on the mulberry leaves. Right, guys? Okay. So the first step is growing mulberry plants on a large scale. So some of the points we earlier talked about this. Right. So we talked about a few basic things. Okay. Yeah. So talking about the life cycle, we also talked about the life cycle of the silk worm, right? So we talked that when the eggs of the silk moth hatch, larvae are produced and they are called as caterpillar or silk worm. So when the eggs are hatched, larva that comes out of it, that now it is called as caterpillar or silk worm that looks like a worm. The next stage of the caterpillar's life was of what? It was called as pupa. So after silk worm, it is pupa. That is the next stage of the life of the silk moth to enter into this stage the caterpillar will do what it will weave a net that can hold it it will weave a net around its body that can hold it the caterpillar then swing its head in the shape of an eight as it swings its head fiber is secreted okay so fiber uh, this uh, uh, this caterpillar what it does now this caterpillar Okay, this will start to secrete the fiber. Secrete the fiber around its body. Okay, and what happens? Initially, the fiber is very soft, but since it comes into contact with air, it gradually it hardens. Right, guys? Okay, so the fiber which this silk worm is uh, secreting this basically caterpillar is secreting it is made up of protein and as it comes in contact with air it hardens and forms the silk fiber right the caterpillar then covers itself into silk and turns into pupa so this is stage which we are seeing over here this cocoon this outer covering it is actually silk it is actually silk fiber and it is made up of what huh guys It is protein now. You guys can my you guys can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So the silk fiber it is made up of protein, guys. Okay, and it hardens when it comes into contact with air. Initially, it is soft, but 
gradually it will harden itself right the covering of the caterpillar is called as the cocoon this covering which you saw that was called as cocoon now then the caterpillar turns into a silk moth inside this covering right now the caterpillar will convert itself into a silk moth so silk moth have you guys seen a silk moth silk moth no it is just a, a shorter form of a butterfly okay look the full grown silk moth will look like this see this image it will look like this but a uh, silk moth will look like this see over here it will be looking like this okay yeah i have got the figure over here see over here this is how the silk moth looks like right yes sir let me complete the diagram so this is how the silk moth will look like right so the caterpillar has not converted uh, has turned into a silk moth inside the covering inside the cocoon it has converted into a silk moth right and the silk thread on the silk yarn is obtained from the cocoon basically the farmers who obtain the silk yarn uh, a silk thread on the silk uh, from the silk yarn it is basically coming from this cocoon basically the outer covering uh, uh, inside which this silk moth is living and different types of silks are obtained because of the different types of silk moths so there are different species of silk moths hence we obtain different types of silks guys right okay now let's let's discuss about the steps of the sericulture so in detail we have studied about the basically the life cycle of the silk uh, silk worm now let's study about the detail method of obtaining the silk right guys so the practice of obtaining silk it is called a sericulture like farmers they are uh, farming is not only concerned with growing crops farming is can also be of honey farming can also be of silk farming can also be of uh, jute right guys so the farming of silk worm simply it is known as what sericulture so it is more clearly defined as the rearing of silk worms to produce raw silk is called sericulture okay so what is this rearing here that we will discuss in a minute so in the process of sericulture what happens said silk worms are reared at appropriate temperatures and humidity to get silk threads from cocoons look what happens in the process of sericulture basically silk worms are grown at a large scale okay and they are kept at a appropriate temperature where the uh, um where the if you see the image over here the x over here they hatch at an appropriate temperature and after the the eggs are hatched the silk worms can come out of them and the silk worms they will feed on mulberry leaves so mulberry leaves are provided to, to them the silk worms will feed upon the mul mulberry leaves after a while they will convert themselves into cocoon and then the cocoon is boiled to obtain the silk fiber from it so this is basically what goes in the practice of sericulture so the practice of sericulture is divided into two or three steps guys okay so i have just uh, give you an idea of what happens in sericulture is it clear yes sir sundos to you yes okay look let's discuss each of the steps in detail here okay let's talk about the first step so first step in the production of silk involves the rearing of silk worm rearing of silk worm this is the first step in the production of silk worm so what happens a female silk moth will lay hundred of eggs at a same time say in this figure okay a female silk moth will lay hundreds of eggs at the same time and the eggs of silk moth are stored carefully on paper strips uh in a in a go down like area and then it is sold to silk worm farmers so the silk moth see this figure that one is a better description over here yeah see this silk moth has laid hundreds of eggs over here 
All right, guys. Now these x are spread on a piece of paper. These x are spread on a piece of paper. Then, since the farming is done on a large scale, so the quantity of x being laid by the silk moths are in lakhs here. There is not only one silk moth laying x here, right? Definitely because we are doing it on a large scale. So the x of silk moths are st uh, stored carefully on the paper strips. And then it is sold to silkworm farmers. So now the silkworm farmers will do what? It will keep the eggs at a suitable temperature, guys, so that it can hatch. And it also requires a suitable temperature as well as humidity. Okay. Getting it? Yes, sir. That is simply the first step called as rearing of silkworm. Okay, so when suitable temperature and humidity and hygienic condition is provided to this uh, egg of silk moth, the eggs are uh, getting warmed also. Okay, now after a certain period of time, the uh, eggs will start to hatch and silk worms, that is, uh, that is silk worms, that is caterpillar will start coming out of it. Okay, guys. And then what will happen? The silk worms that comes out of the eggs they are fed with mulberry leaves because majority of the species of silk worms they eat upon what they eat mulberry leaves guys okay now so the the silk worms now they will continuously start uh, they will continuously eat the mulberry leaves day and night and they will grow big in size after 25 to 30 days what happens the silk worms will start stop uh, they will stop eating Okay, and they are now ready to spin the silk fiber around themselves, around their body, guys. Right. Okay, so the silk worms will basically what before forming a cuckoo, before form uh, before releasing the silk fiber around their body, they will first climb a twig. Twig, you know, basically a small piece of branch. Okay, look, if there's a tree like this. Yeah, see, this is your branch. So basically, they will climb now to a small twig, a small piece of branch that is called as twig. So they will climb to the twigs, okay, and they then they will spin cocoon of silk fibers around themselves, and they will attach themselves to this cocoon, right? They will attach themselves to the cocoon and the cocoon fiber, and they will attach themselves around the twig, and then they will start releasing the silk fiber right right guys okay so now the cocoon is formed here okay so the silk worms enclose themselves completely inside the this cocoon here okay and this whole step takes two to three days okay so let me summarize it what is the rearing of silk worms so the first step is what silk moths I'm writing just the keywords here. You guys are required to explain it once you are or while you will be making notes. Okay. So silk moths. Is that okay? Or do I need to uh, write the whole process in sentences? Or the will the key keywords be okay with you guys? Keywords will be okay, no? Sorry. Okay, sir. It it will be okay, no? Okay. Once you have okay. understood what goes in the process. So the keywords, the keywords will basically help you. So silk moths will lay eggs up to hundreds of eggs, right? Then what goes? The eggs are spread on a piece of paper. Okay. Then it is bought by farmer. Either it might be bought by farmer or, or the person who is basically uh, involved in this practice. He might be doing all the processes himself. Okay. So it will be spread on a piece of paper, then proper temperature, humidity, and hygienic condition is provided. Hygienic condition is provided, right? So after some time, what will happen? The eggs will hatch and the caterpillar will start to come out of it. Okay. Then for 25 to 30 days, they are continuously fed with mulberry leaves. Mulberry leaves. 
okay and then they will stop and then they will start releasing silk fiber around their body and they will um, attach themselves to a piece of branch that is called a twig using the silk fiber and forms cocoon so one question to you guys why this cocoon is hard in nature why how it becomes hard by air hmm? by air by air right so once it comes in contact with air it will start to harden all right guys okay now next okay. step is what next step is what conversion of this cocoon now into thread so see this image over here the first image which i showed you see the larva that emerges okay it will continue to feed for 25 to 30 days right so basically uh, once the cocoon is formed right all this process up to here step number one step number two step number three these were part of what rearing guys okay now see this step over here no no see this one step see the step number four in this step what the farmers does the pupa which is inside the cocoons are killed by putting the cocoon in hot water which kills the worms as well as loosens the filaments so the primary reason behind boiling the cocoon is to loosen the fiber soften the fiber because it is hard so there will be a caterpillar die uh, yes yes the caterpillar in the worm inside it the caterpillar inside of it it will die okay right so this is how silk is obtained so the basic reason is to soften it to soften the cocoon okay why go and send this that so is the reason we boil it become a silk moth no 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 okay if they are they, uh, look what happens now they are in the process of becoming a silk uh, uh, is a, a silk moth here if they are, they will not uh, they are not boiled and they are left they are, they are left there on the twig after a few days silk moth will come out of the cocoon but here before silk moth uh, before uh, even before the silk moth starts to grow inside the cocoon they are boiled here so it's still the worm the worm the, uh, the caterpillar worm has not converted into cook, into silk moth here right guys they will so the, be they will not boil all the cocoons they will left some cocoons exactly. for the recycling exactly they have to left some of the cocoons out there in the open so there there will be some silk moths who will lay the egg right okay so maintain the balance they need to left out some of the cocoons some of the uh, uh, silk worms alive right so in the second step what goes basically silk fibers are obtained from cocoons by boiling the by boiling them okay and then cocoons are spun that is twisted since its fibers have become soft and now so they are twisted to form silk threads and these threads are called as now silk yarn guys so look second step is obtaining silk fibers from cocoons so in this what happens cocoons are boiled right so this softens it softens the fiber then what happens cocoons are spun cocoons are spun that is what twisted so how they are spun look at this here look so look this is a cocoon here it is soft it is soft here it has been softened by boiling so they will basically take an eyelid from it eyelid basically means a piece of fiber out of it they will roll it into a ball like a structure like this eyelid okay and then using a wheel it will be rolled usually in villages people 
uh, usually practice this occupation. So at every homes, usually uh, at every homes, now it is the practice of sericulture is being done in the factories, but still in many parts of India, in many villages, you will see people is still practice this at a domestic level. Okay. So using a hand wheel, they will basically start to rotate it like this. Okay. Spun it like this and the silk fiber will start to come out of it in the form of thread. So basically silk fibers from the cocoon are con being converted into thread like form. And these threads are called as silk yarn. Okay, guys. So okay. silk threads called silk yarn are obtained from. I think that can you explain again? Okay, sure. Look, once they have boiled all the cocoons they have boiled the cocoons they will take out of it they will take it out from the boiling water okay they will allow it to cool for some time now it has become soft and now it is soft now okay it is consisting of fibers so what they will do now they will basically from a corner they will start picking out the this fiber they will start picking out the fiber and try to take it out in the form of thread so they will take it out in the form of thread and on a wheel on a wheel, they will start to roll it. Okay. They will start to roll it. And this wheel has got a handle. This wheel has got a handle over here. Okay. And this handle will be rolled continuously. And the silk fibers will start coming out of this cocoon in the form of thread. And we call that thread as silk yarn, guys. Is that clear now, uh, Sundus? Yes. <clears throat> Okay, if it's, uh, if it's still not, I will add an animation video for this. Okay, then it will become more clear, right? Okay, okay now see the third step is basically conversion of the silk thread into clothes. Basically converting the silk fiber or the silk thread into clothes. So that is basically done at uh, mill. That is basically done at mill by the weavers guys. Okay. <clears throat> okay, All right. what did you say? I didn't hear you. Okay, I see that the last step involved in the production of silk is basically conversion of the silk fiber into silk cloth. Okay. <clears throat> okay, one more thing we just uh, missed over here that the taking out of the thread from the cocoons, it is called as reeling. So, note this step over here. Note this definition that the process of taking out we are talking about this this step over here all right the process of taking out silk fibers from the cocoon in the form of silk yarn is called as reeling guys okay right that is called as reeling and reeling is done in it can be done manually and it can be done using machines as well okay usually nowadays it is being done using machines all right <clears throat> okay and then the third step is basically converting silk fibers into clothes so this earlier it was done on a domestic level mills okay textile mills on a domestic level but nowadays it is being done at a larger scale in factories okay so basically the silk fibers that we have obtained from the cocoon in the form of thread now it will be converted into what into clothes okay done at domestic and commercial level right guys okay now 
we see we have different varieties of silks as well for example you must have heard about tassar silk muga silk eri silk talking about varieties of silk which we see in the market so some of the examples are tassar silk okay muga silk all right then you have eri silk so you can remember examples of these different varieties of silk okay <clears throat> all right now talking about the natural silk and artificial silk look silk is usually expensive or cheaper guys what do you guys think expensive it is expensive because there are several steps involved in it and and what it is hard to find sleep mode yeah nowadays finding finding the cocoons is very difficult very hard. rare very hard right guys so it is basically the natural silk is obtained from the cocoons of silk worm and this cocoon it is made up of what protein calcium vitamin what proteins proteins good Protein. yeah and this natural silk is animal fiber or synthetic fiber animal fiber animal, animal. fiber definitely so you see one we have natural silk but now we have got one alternative for Thank this natural you. silk as well do you guys know about the alternative of natural silk see natural no. silk it is coming out of cocoon right cocoon but there's a synthetic silk also why synthetic silk because it is man made made by the humans okay it is not coming naturally from uh, the source is although the source here you will see it's naturally but it goes through chemical process but in natural silk the process of obtaining and formation of a uh, silk fiber none uh, uh, not in none of the steps we were using chemicals okay so in the synthetic silk definitely we will be using some chemicals so see you have an example of artificial silk which is called rayon so rayon is a synthetic silk or we may also call it as synthetic fiber no issue in that synthetic fiber so have you guys heard of wood pulp tell what wood pulp w double o d wood pulp yeah look plant material consists of cellulose you guys know that okay yes sir. and okay wood pulp basically comes out of woods wood pulp basically comes out of wood okay so this wood pulp it is may, uh, coming out of the uh, uh, wood it consists it consists of cellulose guys it is made up of basically cellulose which is a natural fiber okay so it is made up of wood pulp okay a type no it consists of cellulose it consists of cellulose now later on what happens it is chemically treated it is chemically treated so in first way in the uh, in case of natural silk we are seeing that it is basically made up of cocoon and there is no chemicals used in the whole step no chemicals used but in the case of synthetic fiber we have one example of a synthetic fiber called as rayon although it is coming from a natural source that is wood pulp okay wood pulp which is basically a modified plant material and it is uh, rich in cellulose okay so it is now being chemically treated guys this is being chemically treated hence we put it under the category of artificial silk or synthetic silk so we can also call it as artificial silk hope the difference is clear between them is that clear yes sir okay yes, now sir. let's talk about the discovery of silk now okay how the silk was discovered 
okay one obvious thing is that it was made in china a long time back okay so it is not said that the chinese emperor si lungchi was asked by an emperor huang ti to find the cause of the damaged leaves of mulberry leaves in their garden so interestingly there was a mulberry tree in the in their garden okay so the emperor was asked it what is the cause of the damaged leaves damaged leaves basically the leaves which was being eaten by the silk worm so the em emperor found that there were some white worms eating up the mulberry leaves okay she also noticed that these worms were spinning shiny cocoons around themselves okay so let's study about this uh, uh, discovery why this paragraph okay and then we will understand about the discovery as well okay so who will read uh, sundus you read it okay start reading it okay the exact time of discovery of silk is perhaps unknown according to an old chinese legend the empress the emperor si lang chi was asked by the emperor huang ti to find the cause of the damaged leaves of mulberry trees growing in their garden the empress found white worms eating up mulberry leaves she also noticed that they were spinning shiny cocoons around them accidentally a cocoon dropped into her cup of tea and tangle of delicate threads separated from the cocoon silk industry began in china and was kept a closely guarded secret for hundred of years later on traders and travelers introduced silk to other countries the route they travel is still called the silk route sir the silk, silk route. route silk route exactly. i have learned this. yeah exactly this is the silk route okay so basically the silk was being produced in in china and they did not shared this technique with any part of the world with the world okay so basically people used to go via the via a route to china to get silk from there and hence the name was termed as silk route guys okay okay sir so basically we see here no it it uh, what happened no a cocoon dropped into her cup accidentally okay and delicate silk threads start coming out from the cocoon so this is how silk was discovered by chance it was not intentionally discovered it was discovered by chance and for a very long period of time uh, the uh, the silk production in china was kept a secret okay later on tra traders and travelers coming from china introduced silk to the world okay and the route which was basically uh, used to travel it was called as silk route guys okay and still china leads the world, world in silk production even now china is the leading producer of silk in the world okay and india in fact india is also among the leading producer of silk in the world right so that is how the discovery of silk happened okay now that's the end of the chapter any confusions regarding any uh, topic everything's clear yes sir okay good so let's discuss some important questions okay so first uh, first question is that uh why can you name two animal fibers two fibers obtained from animals so wool and silk wool and silk silk good good and so those you name two fibers obtained from plants cotton and jute cotton and jute, jute. very good very good very good okay okay now uh what terms are used for falling processes for example removing hair of sheep along with a thin layer of skin what sir what do we call remove removal of hair from sheep along with a thin layer of skin shaving, what do we shaving, call that shaving shaving not shaving shearing 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 okay and washing of that fleece to remove dust dirt and dry uh, and grease and dried sweat scoring scouring scouring okay separating sheep's fleece into fibers of different qualities sorting sir sorting 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 sorter is the one who does the process of sorting 
okay yeah. and what disease do the sorters catch sorter disease sorters disease and what is the uh, uh, bacteria responsible for that anthrax anthrax yeah. good 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 okay name a tree which provides leaves for the um, uh, provides uh, leaves as food for the silkworm mulberry leaves mulberry leaves okay what are some of the natural colors of sheep and goats white black brown white black and brown very good very good okay what do we call uh, um, uh, what do we call silk production what is the alternate name of silk production is it apiculture sericulture silviculture or tissue culture sericulture 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 good good okay okay so let's look at the ncert questions here okay now see these questions okay let's quickly discuss them yes what does the first question says why go like you must have been uh, familiar with the following nursery rhymes <laughs> nursery rhymes okay so the question related to this uh, rhyme is that which part of the black sheep have wool it's basically the hairy skin right which is called yes. as what do we call that hairy skin guys fleet please no fleet is different thing fleece fleece a f l w e c e okay okay see next question what is meant by the white fleece of the lamb it basically refers no to the white colored hairy skin right the hair of the lamb right Yeah, exactly, exactly. White fleece of the lamb means the white colored hairy skin. All right. Okay. See next question. The silk form is a caterpillar, a larva. Choose the correct option. Caterpillar. No, look. A silk form is basically both a caterpillar and a larva. It is basically what? It is the different stage or uh, stages of this uh, of this form. Yeah, okay. so both A and B. Both A and B. Okay, which of the following does not yield wool? Woolly dog. Woolly dog. Good. Woolly dog. Yeah. What is meant by the following terms? Rearing. Okay, shearing and sericulture. So rearing is what, Sundas? Rearing is like uh, you. What do you say? Like, uh, how do you say that? The like, which one you are asking? The silk worm or the goat one? It is related to it is related to sericulture. Okay. Okay. The pr production of silk worms. Oh, sorry. Uh, production of silk. Production of silk. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, the thing is now. Whether you talk about uh, production of silk or whether you talk about wool, in both the cases you are taking care of animals, so you have to define it in context of both. So that would be a complete definition. I was confused that that should I define the goat one? Okay, you you have to basically define them as animals. Basically, the process of keeping, feeding, and taking care and of and taking care of my dinghy. Use yeah. Of yeah. of animals that is simply called as rearing to obtain why rearing is being done to obtain useful products for them from them. Okay, so the these animals are basically giving us useful products, right? Okay, why can I explain shearing? Like the process of removing fleece of the sheep, mm -hmm. uh, along with, with thin, skin thin layer of the skin, is called as um sharing sharing good good yes on this next one you explain the next one what yes. explain next next one that is uh, sericulture yeah sericulture is a positive process of uh, uh that for these silk worms to ex extract the silk from them exactly very good okay now see next question given below is a sequence of steps in the processing of wool which are the missing steps add them 
So in a sequence, let's write the steps. So first step is given here. What is the next step? Scoring. Scoring. Yeah. yeah. Basically cleaning it. Okay. Then sorting it's given here. Then what Dying. is the next step? Dying. 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 No, Dying. There, was, there was, I guess, one more step. Hmm. Like we straight, we were straightening out the fibers, no? Cutting and cutting, combing, cutting, cutting or comb. combing, exactly. Okay, then it's dying and then Spinning. rolling. Yeah, just retailing. Okay. Dying is before sort sorting. After sorting is dying. Right? After look, after you have sorted it now, after you have sorted it as per the quality and as per the texture, dying. as per the quality and as for the texture. Now you need to do what? There was one more step. Entangle combing. the. Yep. Yeah. Basically, you. And then it, dying. And then Starting. dying. And then you spin it, basically roll it to obtain fibers from it, to obtain, to uh, convert it into thread. Right. Okay. So the wool yarn your mother's grandmother's must be using. To uh, for weaving, okay. So that this is how no. that you wool yarn is coming. Okay, your grandmothers must have done that. Okay, if not your no, mother. No, she passed away like 2019. I didn't saw her. I just saw like very. Nice. Okay, 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 okay. That's very unfortunate. Okay, okay. All right, guys. So uh, let's move on to next question. Okay. Question number six. So make a sketches of the two stages uh, in the life history of the silk moth, which are directly related to the production of silk. Okay. So basically, this is simple. You guys can do it yourself. Right. So you have to simply make a sketches of the stages in the life history of a silk moth, which are directly related to the production of silk. So here can you can make any sketches. Yeah. We can make any sketches. Yeah, you can be. You are basically required to uh, draw the life uh, life cycle of silk moth over here. Okay. Full life cycle. Yeah, you can draw the full uh, full life cycle over here. Okay, like how silk worm, um, how silk moth lays the egg over the mulberry leaves and the egg hatches and then the it will eat the leaves. Okay, and then caterpillar. Basically, caterpillar will uh, start to release the fiber and then it will form cocoon. The whole process. Okay. Now, see next question. Out of the following, which are the two terms related to silk production? Sericulture, floriculture, moriculture, apiculture, and silviculture. Sericulture. 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 And just one more. Moriculture. Moriculture. So, what is now? This is basically scientific name of mulberry. Okay. Silk production involves what? Cultivation of mulberry leaves and rearing silk worms. Okay. That is basically sericulture. And this moriculture here is basically what? It is scientific name of mulberry is morosalba. So from that morosalba comes the name moriculture. Look here. The silk worm feed upon mulberry leaves, guys. Mulberry leaves. Okay, look, all the different species we are seeing on earth, whether animals or whether plants, all of them have got a scientific name. Like my name is uh, whatever my name is, whatever yours name is. But on a, uh, uh, but we all humans have got a common name that is called as Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens, right, guys? So similarly, yeah, can you plug in? look can like you plug in? like uh, um, like me and you, and your brothers, sisters, your friends, all of them have got unique names, different names, right? But names of all the species, names of all the animals of a species, all the plants of a species, okay, basically. All the humans have got a common name that is called as Homo sapiens. Okay. So we have got a scientific name. If a scientist was studying on humans, he would say that I'm studying on 
I'm not standing on Vaiga or Sandos. I'm not standing on him or her or that person. He will say, I'm standing on a homo sapien. So that is basically a scientific name of human. Human scientific name. When I was Sorry. small, I thought oh, like human is animal. Look, we... the definition. Yes, we were. Definition of animal. And okay, look. Like look, we are animal. That is true. Okay, but we are social animals. We live in society. Okay. And we are civilized animals, right? Okay, guys. So that's why humans are also under the category of animals, but we are called as civilized and we are called as social animal. Okay. Now coming back to our discussion, scientific name of mulberry is Morus alba. Hence, it is the, the practice of, of production of silk is also called as Mori culture. Right. Okay. Now, see question number eight. Match the words of column width with those given in column two. Okay. Yes. Let's quickly get done with this one. So, scoring is what, guys? Uh, scoring is cleaning shared skin. Yeah, cleaning. exactly. Cleaning the shared, shared skin. Mulberry leaves, it is? Food of silk worm. Food of silk worm. Yak. Uh, wool wool yielding animal. Yeah. Wool Yields. Uh, wool yielding animal. And cocoon. Yield silk fiber. Yield uh, silk fiber. fiber. Good, good. And reeling, there was one more option left here. So if there was one more question over here. So reeling is basically what? Practice of obtaining silk yarn from cocoon using a wheel whether uh, it be manually or whether it be in an industry we take out silk threads from the cocoon that is called as a reeling okay now let's look at some more questions so given here is a crossword puzzle okay based on this lesson we have a crossword puzzle here okay let's take help of the hands and try to answer the questions okay in the down section See the first uh, first question, thorough washing. Scoring, yeah. I think so. Scoring, or we can call it as yeah, scoring. Cleaning. Cleaning Fish. as well. We can simply call it as a score, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Animal fiber. Uh, wool then. Mm -hmm. so. Animal fiber wool. Okay, and double silk. double well wool. Or we could have written silk as well. Yeah. Good. Silk. Yeah. See um, the next one. Long, long thread like thread. a structure. Yes. What is that? Cocoon sat one. No, fiber? no, no. Fiber. 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 Fiber, guys. Fiber sundus. Okay. That is fiber. Okay. And the next one. And the across keeps section warm. keeps warm. Wooden, yeah. uh, wooden jacket. Keeps warm. That is wool. Yeah. So here you see we should have taken in the question number two. We should have written silk. Huh? So that we yes, will be sir. able to fit our answer over here. Why is it not raising? Yes. So if we didn't, if we wrote silk over here, then we could have written what here? Clean. Wool, no? Uh, where did it went? Yeah, here. Wool. Right, this is fiber. Okay, now see question number two. Mulberry leaves. Yeah. Mulberry. Mulberry leaves, exactly. Okay, so where is it? Here. 2A. Mulberry leaves, yeah. Okay, last question. Caterpillar. Caterpillar, yeah. Hatches from egg of moth. That is caterpillar. caterpillar. Very good, guys. Okay. So, caterpillar Pillar over here. Okay, okay. So, we have completed the exercise work here as well. Okay. All Assignment right, will be right. 
sir. Yeah, that will be assignment. Okay. Um, leave the skip this uh, crossword one. Okay. And rest, you guys are required to solve. Okay, just write the answers. No need to uh, write the questions. Okay. All right. So, would you guys like to solve a few more questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, uh, do tell me that. Uh, um, what do you mean by um, reeling? What do you mean by reeling? R double E L I N G. Both of you will explain first why I explain this one. The fibers like join, twisted, and then combined with a number of um, other filaments to make a thread. To make a thread. Good. Thank Good. you. Good. Sundus? Yeah, Sundus? Uh, am I audible? Wait, wait, sir, just wait a second. Okay, okay, no sure. Yeah, I'm done. Oh, is it? Yeah. Am I audible to you, sir? Yeah, now you are audible. Um, it is the process of which... Uh, what is like... the process of reeling? What happens in reeling, basically? Cocoon, they reach together. Hmm? Cocoon, sir? And produce a single thread and produce a single thread. Okay. They produce a single thread. No, and look. All really. They do not produce a single thread. We are trying to extract a yarn from it. Yarn out of the cocoon. Okay. So once you have boiled the cocoon, now it is soft. So we basically take, uh, take a, uh, we start taking out thread like structures from it by the help of a wheel so several filaments of fibers are taken out from the cocoon and then they are spun see in this image over here how they are spun see they are basically being twisted okay they are being twisted like this like this they are being twisted to form into a thread so this process was called as reeling so this one which I'm highlighting over here. That is simply the process of reeling, guys. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So which stage comes early in the life history of a silk moth? Is it pupa or larva? Larva. 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 That is correct. Okay. Mm, okay. So sheep are hard, uh, herbivores or omnivores? Herbivores. Herbivores. Definitely. Okay. What type of food is given to the sheep? Grass. Yes, it's basically. Okay. One question. How woolen clothes helps us keep keep warm in winters? The woolen clothes have empty 